Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our hurricane season forecast, specifically the numbers forecast. So how many named storms, how many hurricanes, and how many major hurricanes we expect this season. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know how many storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes do you think we're going to see this season? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. I'm just going to update you guys on our total hurricane forecast, our most updated version of this 2021 hurricane season forecast. Now, first things first, we have to go over the regions so you can be familiarized with those regions we're going to be mentioning throughout this video. First off, in the green area, we have the East Coast. Duh. Now, in the blue shade there, we have the Gulf of Mexico. South and east of there, we have the Caribbean. And then we have the main development region. And that's probably the only one you've never heard of. Uh, the MDR is what we call that for short. And that is where most hurricanes start their life there, uh, just offshore of Africa. And they work their way westward all the way towards the Caribbean and work their way through and either go to the Gulf, the East Coast, or OTS, which stands for out to sea. So sometimes they go way out to sea as well. Uh, but most times they start out in that MDR. That is like the hurricane birthplace right there. So that is a very important region, actually. Let's talk about those sea surface temperatures. And hurricanes love warm sea surface temperatures. So this is very uh, important, actually, for the development. And first things first, we expect slightly above average temperatures, sea surface temperatures, that is for the Gulf, the East Coast, and portions of the Caribbean as well. Uh, so for this entire orange region, basically, we do expect there to be some above average sea surface temperatures around. And this is uh, pretty important because those hurricanes that make their way towards the East Coast, they could continue to develop as they approach the coast. That's very important because if there's very cold sea surface temperatures by the East Coast, they do weaken uh, significantly before reaching the coast there. But if there's warm temperatures, they can just continue on developing and getting even stronger uh, before making landfall. Same story with the Gulf. But typically the Gulf, whether it's below normal or above normal temperatures, it's still going to be very, very ripe for hurricane development. Above normal temperatures just makes it even more insane. All right, now let's add that moderately above average sea surface temperature region. Closer to the coast, I do expect some moderately above average sea surface temperatures here, uh, especially if we can get some warmer air down there for the month of May, which is what we expect. You can check out our May forecast. Uh, that's going to be our most recently uploaded video yesterday. I am also going to put a tab at the top right where you can click that and check that out today as well. Uh, but we do expect above normal air temperatures around this region, and that will influence the sea surface temperatures as well. Now, we also have slightly above average sea surface temperatures expected for our MDR, which is important because that means it's going to be even more favorable for these regions. We also have a moderately above average sea surface temperature region there, uh, basically from the Caribbean, and you take that all the way eastward towards Africa as well. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to take a look at the below normal sea surface temperatures in just a moment. Then we're going to move on to things like wind shear development, uh, overall forecast for the hurricane season and then we're gonna get into that exciting numbers forecast as well all right now here is the below average sea surface temperatures one is going to be there pretty much for south america south of jamaica uh, we do just expect a little bit of some below normal sea surface temperatures for that spot the models have trended at it uh, there is no real reason that I can come up with for why there's going to be below normal sea surface temperatures there, but that has been a trend uh, that we've been seeing, and it won't really impact the hurricane season that much because that's not an area that we typically see great development either way. Now, north and east of Bermuda, we also expect some below average sea surface temperatures. This could have some implications uh, as far as the total amount of tropical storms we see or things like that, because sometimes we see those tropical storms develop in this region, and this could hinder that a little bit. So this could lower the number of overall tropical storms we see for the entire season just a tiny bit by maybe one or two. It would be impossible to know whether or not it would have impacted that or not, obviously. Uh, that's something that just happens, and we don't really... We won't really know whether that meant anything or not at the end of the year, but I think it could. The wind shear is going to be an equal chance, or EC right here. Uh, we really need to see what happens with that El Nino or La Nina. Uh, we do expect a neutral Enso or La Nina, most likely, for the upcoming hurricane season, uh, which typically would lead to below normal wind shear. I'll know a lot more about that over the coming months. I do expect to make many, many more hurricane season updates and forecasts. For you guys, just to make sure we have the most updated information, the most accurate information out there. So I'm going to be updating this a handful of times for sure. Uh, we will be able to give you guys a more in 
or I guess uh, just a, really a more direct wind shear forecast, but at this point, uh, we don't really have much to say on that. Here's the development forecast, and this is going to take all things into account. Will there be below average development conditions or above average development conditions? First things first, we have the below average development there for south of the Caribbean, south of Jamaica, south of Haiti, south of Dominican Republic, and even south of Puerto Rico there as well. That's obvious. We have the below normal sea surface temperatures, things of that nature impacting that. Slightly above average uh, development expected there for most of the Caribbean, so around Jamaica, around the Dominican Republic and Haiti, around Cuba, and then around Florida, and even up through the East Coast. I expect slightly above average development. This does not mean that there will be above average development that occurs. It means there's going to be above average development conditions. It's going to be better than average for development in this region. Whether that translates to above average or below average amount of tropical storms, uh, that just depends on a lot of things. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at an area that we expect highly above average development and then even a wild card region. And then we're going to take a look at that overall hurricane season forecast and then that exciting numbers forecast as well. All of those things are coming up in just a moment. All right, so we expect above average development here for the Gulf of Mexico. Obviously, this has been an area that typically does see this very uh, good development, but we even expect above average development this year in the Gulf. It's really ripe, uh, and I think there's going to be great conditions for development there in the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, we also have a wild card region, and that's going to be our main development region. The reason being is that sea surface temperatures is only one half of the equation here for our main development region. Well, I guess one third, because we have dry air, which is going to be pretty hard to, in, you know, it's going to be pretty hard to forecast the dry air anywhere beyond a couple weeks out. Uh, we're going to need to see the pressure patterns for an upcoming month or, or week to know if we're going to see a lot of dry air in the area or not. So that's kind of one that we're not even going to really know until it's happening. Uh, but also the wind shear is going to be a big part of this as well. And again, we won't know for sure until we know for sure if there's going to be a La Nina or a neutral Ento or where that's going to line up because that's going to dictate whether we have a lot of wind shear or if we have not a lot at all. So that's why this is a wild card region here in the purple now, for our overall hurricane season forecast, I'm just going to go region by region. The Gulf of Mexico, highest risk, best chance region there. I think the Gulf is going to be the best for development this year. Not as favorable south of Jamaica. We talked about this multiple times throughout this video. We have above average activity there expected around Florida, Cuba, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, and even Puerto Rico, even up and through the Bahamas as well. Uh, this activity that really works its way from the main development region into this region, uh, also homegrown systems within this region. Uh, I do expect a lot of activity to pass through this region, and this is typically how it goes regardless anyway. Now, shear will dictate everything for the MDR, the main development region. I've said this multiple times, but shear is going to really control whether we see a lot of storms coming out of here or if we don't, you know, if we see not a lot at all. Now, we also have a wild card region up there for the east coast of the United States. Uh, this is going to depend on what kind of high pressure systems we see out in the middle of the Atlantic because uh, if we see one that's really pushed far east, we won't see a lot reach the east coast. But if we see one that's pushed up against Bermuda, watch out because a lot of storms will be working their way up the east coast. That's so you see that how it like depends on a lot of things. Now for our 2021 hurricane season numbers forecast, let's just break it down. And this is actually unfortunately pretty close to last year. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll compare it as we break it down because I just looked at my previous year's forecast. Now for named storms, we have 14 to 20. That's identical to what I was forecasting for last year. And pretty much every single one of these for last year, I underdid everything. So the named storms, the hurricanes, the major hurricanes, I pretty much lowballed it all. I didn't think I was at the time, but we had such a crazy year last year that it exceeded even my expectations for how crazy it could be. Uh, so my forecast, even though it's the same this year, I actually do expect it to be in the same in the range that I'm forecasting here. Although I expected the same thing last year, and that didn't really happen. Uh, so crazy things can happen, but I do expect this year to be lower than last year, although I'm forecasting for the same range on most of these. So name storms, 14 to 20, same as last year. Uh, what I was forecasting for last year, that is. Hurricanes, 7 to 11, I was also forecasting the same amount last year as well, so 7 to 11 hurricanes. Both of these are pretty far above average, by the way, with the with the amount. Uh, major hurricanes, this one is different than last year. I was forecasting for 4 to 7 major hurricanes last year. I've lowered that this year to 3 to 6. 
Uh, obviously, I'm keeping it a little bit more conservative, although this is a pretty active season, but uh, I'm not going crazy because we don't know what the wind shear is going to be looking like. So if the wind shear, if there's a lot of wind shear, expect it to be on the lower end, more like 14 named storms, more like seven hurricanes and more like three major hurricanes, which is a tiny bit above average. Um, but if we don't have any wind shear and we do have those above average sea surface temperatures in place, you can expect more closer to 20 named storms, more like 11 hurricanes and closer to six major hurricanes. So you can see how it, it can fit well within that range on either side. For our confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6. This is a long-range forecast. I mentioned this in yesterday's video for the May forecast. 4 is the highest I will ever go for a seasonal forecast. Uh, so that's pretty high confidence for what this is. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you want this upcoming May to go? And Jacob Vlog said, I just want it to be warm and stay warm. No extreme temperature swings. Uh, and I definitely agree because I've been mentioning to you guys that I get very bad headaches from the big temperature swings. And I really just want it to stay one thing. Uh, and relax a little bit. So, uh, great comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Lair the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Ada Mattis. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manor, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Flagos, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you'd like to be a part of this patron end screen today, you could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Weather Top Dog, Hair Farms One, and then our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you would like to join this one, you could do so by hitting that button next to the subscribe button today. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also, comment down below literally anything for the YouTube algorithm as well. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.